Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm your host, Brother Vince. I'm a disabled veteran, and today I want to talk to you about the government proposal to cut veteran benefits for some and to tax it for others. But before we get into all of that good information, please like, share, and subscribe to Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, or LinkedIn for more content. And if you're a veteran and you would love to share your story and resources with other veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so that we can schedule a meeting. Now that we have gotten into that, I would love to show y'all a video by veteran advocate Chris Snells. And I have his permission to do this video or to show his video. So I just want you to kick back, relax, watch this video. And after this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in this video. Bear with me for one second. Now, this is a video from Chris Nell again. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Chris here with the Brown County Veterans Service Office. And uh, I'm going to talk with you today about the Congressional Budget Office. And, uh, well, you're seeing it on LinkedIn. Everybody's going nuts about it. Uh, not in a good way. Um, with the VA's options against VA compensation and what they want to do over the course of 10 years and means test VA disability compensation for veterans with higher income. We're talking about a $170,000 threshold and uh, it's going to save $253 billion over the course of 10 years. That's the number one thing that they have on the list. It's not the most important thing in my opinion uh, because we're looking at including VA's disability payments as taxable income Think about that for a second. That's going to put you in a different threshold. Uh, if you have 100% coming in and you have a job, um, you're going to be put in a, a different threshold. Um, so that's going to save $161 billion over the course of 10 years. So taxable income, every state has tried to offer um, those with military retirement, no tax. Uh, but, you know, oh, well, we'll find another way to tax and put the burden on the veterans again. Um, how about this one? Narrow eligibility for VA's disability compensation by excluding veterans with low disability ratings. This is interesting to actually hear um, and see, and it ranges from anywhere from seven to forty-eight billion dollars in ten years. So, what does that mean? Does that mean uh, ten to twenty percenters don't matter? Um, wh wh what does that mean? I mean, it's uh, unfathomable to think about. Um, how about this one? In VA's individual unemployability payments to disabled veterans at the full retirement age at Social Security. Um, that's going to create 9 to $47 billion. Or this one, reduce VA's disability benefits for veterans who are older than the full retirement age for Social Security. So not only do you eliminate getting any benefits, and compensation as a veteran when you hit the age of Social Security. They want you to become very broke over VA Social Security because here's the deal. You're going to go for Social Security benefits when you retire, but you're not going to have VA disability benefits coming to you. Uh, this is astronomical. In fact, it's, it's just a punch in the face. It's a kick in the chest to all of us as veterans. I highly recommend you reach out to your congressmen, your senators, Anyone within even your county commissioners, get them on board, write a letter of importance to show that we don't stand behind this. This office won't stand behind it. Myself as a veteran won't stand behind it. And I understand that the office has a responsibility of bringing forth options uh, to reduce spending, to reduce the amount. But in the way that you're coming at it is astronomical. Every veteran put themselves on the line. They wrote a blank check. I don't know other ways to say or, or, or help veterans in this manner, but I'll tell you what's more offensive. It's having non-veterans make a decision about veterans who actually sacrifice themselves. I have watched my brothers be dragged through the street. I have watched my brothers be blown up. I have watched many people be shot and injured. I have watched the flag drape over the caskets. You want to talk about a major offense. This country is held up 
by the blood, sweat, and tears of veterans. And that's the first thing you think of is taking away their disability payments because they didn't sacrifice their body. Unbelievable. I'm very shocked by it and uh, very offended. And if you're a veteran that's not offended by it, um, it's okay. I respect your opinion, but I, I would, uh, I would think through that a little bit more and think about all the asinine spending that's going on everywhere else. Um, the VA has the ability to relieve some of their spending duties by not providing elective surgeries for those that haven't even been service connected for anything. Um, this is, you know, elective surgeries cost money. That cost taxpayers money when we do elective surgeries. Think about that for a second. It's not going to save you $253 billion over 10 years, but it'll save you some money. Um, I just I just request that the Congressional Budget Office actually uh, reevaluates everything that they're talking about. Just because everything went skyrocket since 2000 doesn't mean that inflation didn't occur, that we didn't have a housing crisis at one point, that we're not going through inflation again. Um, we have economic structures that are being dismantled daily right now. I'm pleading. I'm pleading as a veteran, please reconsider and do not continue to move forward on this effort. Thank you. So I just want to take the time and say to Mr. Chris Snell that Vet Talk is in full support of everything that you had to say. And my condolence are, I would say, um, my heart goes out to all of us as veterans out there, especially those older veterans who are being threatened in this manner, because it's a sad situation um, that we're faced with as veterans, especially for the older generations, being that a lot of them from the ones I knew personally that I've helped along the way won't name names because I did it in secret. So I wanted to stay there, but, um, a lot of them didn't know nothing about VA benefits. A lot of them didn't find out until after going on a job, trying to figure out why they had, you know, certain things going on in their, in their body and different things. And fast four years later, they found out that a lot of their issues were service connected and had nothing to do with what they were doing currently at that moment as far as job wise or, you know, just because they might have been eating around things, even though that may have played, you know, a small part in what was going on. They found out through time that a lot of different things happened to them in the military, such as Agent Orange and different cancers and you know, mental disorders, you know, let's just think about all of the veterans who died without ever receiving a dime. There are so many veterans that are in the grave unknown to the public. Public don't know it, but a lot of veterans died and didn't receive benefits. A lot of family members are out there who had veterans that died that never received benefits, nor were they service connected, even though they might have had issues that was service connected. But because of, you know, um, how the system was and it's getting better in some ways, but still it still has a lot of different things that are going on. Um, it's a lot of veterans that missed out. And a lot of that money that was given by this country for veterans, where did that money go? especially if you have veterans who died and never received those benefits. Those are questions that we must ask because we can't assume all oh, well because the government gave the VA all this money that every veteran we ever known got taken care of. There are a lot of veterans who haven't gotten taken care of, even in the day and age where we live in to where there's so much information out there for veterans. There's a lot of different veterans that don't know. And the reason why I'm making this point is because it's crazy for me that, you know, they want to take away something we earn for, you know, for our, for our service. That's, that's crazy. And I understand that, you know, we volunteer and I believe that at the same time, um, the same could be said for athletes and actors. Like, you know, we don't question athletes and actors being paid residual income for the rest of their life or being compensated for 
playing sports or making movies and different things. And I'm not even taking away from those people. They did what they did. They volunteer and they deserve, they just do for what they do. But you mean to tell me that a veteran who died that, that, you know, potentially almost died for this country, gave them lives, lost an arm, lost a leg, lost an eye and many other things. You mean to tell me that these veterans, um, should it be compensated or now they should start taxing and taking away from the little bit that we are getting? Because I want you to understand that on average, you know, we might make if three to 4,000 a month. And I know some people say, well, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that it, it, it is. And I'm not knocking, you know, that because I'm be honest with you. I think that's a blessing to be able to receive that. But for them to tax that during a time where inflation is high and, you know, ta um, taxes for some veterans in some states and different things are going on. I think that's crazy to take away the little that we get in. And they're not dealing with, you know, the people who are getting a lot. Like there are people out there making millions and they barely playing money out in taxes. You know, perfect example um, of veterans not getting the recognition that we should would be like, think about it, for example, with Lamar Jackson. You know, his name in the mouth of everyone on social media for not being paid. Millions of dollars, but no one is really saying much when it comes to, you know, the veterans. And that's sad, man. And I think that as a country and a community, it's time for us to reevaluate who is more important to our nations. You know what I'm saying? I believe pastors, police, firemen, healthcare workers, teachers, servers at restaurants, and all the people that do so much for our communities deserves more. Um, more love than we show them in our country. You know what I'm saying? Because to be honest to you, these people do a lot for us. You know, I, I, I appreciate those men and women who even serve me at McDonald's or, you know, Wendy's. This It don't matter where they work at. I, I appreciate their service because, again, I understand that these people get paid a little bit to do so much. But yet, in our country, these people don't get no love. But as soon as somebody say they play sports and – they, you know, get on TV and do, you know, ungodly stuff and, you know, show all this, you know, um, crazy stuff that they're doing. Um, let's talk about, you know, the transsexual community. You know, they're able to, you know, get out there and do all this crazy stuff in front of kids. And if somebody says something against them, everybody stands up, they say something, they fight against it. But yet you mean to tell me that the people who do the most that uplifts people, they don't get treated with no respect, no dignity. No love. That's crazy. You know, we live in a in a country where a twenty year old millionaire has more influence than a pastor or a veteran, or even a um or even um, you know, community leaders on you know on social media and other platforms. These people get more love than these people because of the, you know the God of this world, and I understand that, you know. But I believe the Lord is going to bring um about you know a change when it comes to godly influence. That would change the heart and the mind of those in power. I believe that this is what the Lord is going to do. So I think it's time for us as God's people to show our use of force, our power with prayer against the wiles of the enemy, man. I, I, I just think it's time. And I want to take y'all to, you know, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 3, man. And I want to show y'all what we are dealing with. I know that. In Corinthians, it talks about us not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against rulers of powers, darkness, um, spiritual wickedness, a high place. It talks about all that. And that's exactly what I know that we're fighting against. Even in the veteran community, if there's a, if there's any fight to be had, that's what, we, that's why we have to use the power of prayer because the fight is not physical people. Although we see people, we see their faces, we see them in legislation, we see them, you know, um, in, as presidential candidates and sitting in the seats as presidents and different things, man, there's powers to be behind those people that are influencing their judgments. And if we want to win and fight these battles and attack anything, we have to begin there. And I know it's true because in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 3, it says that, um, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of them own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, 
disobedient to parents, unholy, unthankful, without natural affections. The key part right here, because this is what we arguing about as veterans, truce breakers, truce breakers, which means they say they were going to do something. They was going to take care of us. They was going to do this and do that. But then look, now they're trying to take away what they said they was going to do. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despise of those that are good. You don't think what they're doing is despising us that doing good? You don't think it's all about that? I mean, you know, but the thing I know that's true, man, in Philippians 4 and 19 says it, but my God should supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So no matter what this world may be doing, no matter what may be going on in this world, the Lord is going to take care of us. We're going to be fine. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it may seem like is going on behind the scenes that may, you know, bring about changes in our individual lives. I just believe that if we stand and we pray and believe the Lord to move mountains in our lives by having faith in him, by trusting in him and relying on him, that we're going to be okay. Because Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. paths. So I believe that the Lord has a way that he wants us to go about this thing. I believe that he has a way he wants us to fight when it comes to, you know, standing up against what's going on in the veteran community, you know, that may affect our individual homes. But I think one of the things that, you know, we can do as, you know, the leaders of our home for us men and women out there that have to lead their homes, what we can do is um we could take a stand for our homes, you know, just be prepared, you know, just in case they may do it. Just be, you know, settled with the fact that you may have to live a meager life. You may have to live below the means that you're living now. You know, my family is prepared for that. Like I told my family, man, if we lose things, then I'm willing to sell this house, get the extra that comes with the value of the house. And hey, I'll go get a trailer and live in the country. You know, at the end of the day, we're not going to starve. We're not going to be without. I'm going to figure it out because um, as a soldier, man, we got trained to improvise how to maneuver, how to, you know, move around to do things, man. I, I remember living 15 months in Afghanistan, sleeping on a cot, man. So it don't take nothing for me to just go back to doing what I was trained to do, you know, and I, you know, have a heart for what Mr. Chris is saying about losing, you know, battle buddies, man. I spent 15 months in Afghanistan and I've seen them at Fob Organy bringing bodies and us sitting at the flight line saluting these people that they were bringing in. I don't know whether they were male or female. I don't know who they were, but I remember, you know, losing people that were over there during my 15 months in 2008 through 2009, I remember that, man. I remember going down Route Jeep and almost losing my life. Anybody who been to Afghanistan, they know Route Jeep. Route Jeep is going from, you know, um, Fob Organi to Sharana, you know, because I was in the 62nd Engineer Battalion, 68th CSE Company. And, I mean, we were over there rocking and rolling. You know, I was at Fort Hood in 2000. Nine, when um Hussein shot up posts and killed some folks in 20th Engineers, and I had to do the funeral detail for that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I seen some things in my time. It's just little old me. I seen a lot. I was a part of the funeral detail for those 20 something people. You know, I, I was I was there. I was around that time. Um, you know, I was stationed in Gitmo, man. You know, I got to come to face to face with the people that we call terrorists. You know, I got to see these people. So in my little short period of time in the military, I got to see a lot. I was around a lot. But the one thing I know is, is God is a protector. God is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. I mean, he's all these things because he did it for me. And I'm nobody special. It's nothing that I did to earn his righteousness. It's nothing I done to, to say that I deserve the benefits and the things that I have in my life. But what I do know is that God would make a way out of no way for his people. All we have to do is trust him. Even when I didn't trust him, even when I hated him and didn't want nothing to do with him, he still protected and provided for me. 
And if he's able to do it for me, then I just believe that he's able to do it for you. So don't let what's going on discourage you, keep you down. Don't let it cause you to feel like all hope is lost. Man, put your all in Christ, man. Trust in him. Trust in him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And I promise you, he would direct your path. This has been another episode with your boy, brother, Vince, Vet Talk. Vet Talk out.